live in interesting times. Today's stories. Colombia to authorize nationality for 24,000 Venezuelan children. Forest fires ravage swaths of Siberia. In post-war areas of Syria, mines upend civilian lives. Reactions in Zomba after Malawi top court outlaws single-use plastic. Mexico offers to help the U.S. with gun control legislation. President Trump calls for red flag gun laws and, quote, quick executions for mass killers. Police say there is no indication of racial motive in the Daytona, Ohio shooting. Daytona police chief says the availability of high capacity magazines is problematic after shooting. Plus, for EBC Sports, Major League Soccer joins a Florida community and promotes the All-Star Game in Orlando. Hello everyone, I am Jennifer Polenten, bringing you stories from around the globe, and this is Eagle News, coming to you from New York. Colombian President Ivan Duque signed an order on Monday allowing 24,000 children born in the country to Venezuelan parents to be risking statelessness to be given Colombian nationality. Nos unimos para decirle a esos 24,000 niños que han estado en esa situación que prácticamente conducía a la patridia que no van a estar en esa situación y que hoy se les entrega la nacionalidad colombiana. The children were victims of a legal loophole that prevented them from obtaining their parents' nationality due to insurmountable obstacles, but left them without Colombian nationality due to the legislation that doesn't recognize citizenship based on place of birth. Duque said, quote, Today, Colombia has shown the world that despite economic limitations, that even though we have revenues of less than $8,000 per capita, much less than European countries that have experienced migration crises, we know how to turn brotherhood into a feeling of solidarity. He claimed the children were unable to get Venezuelan nationality because Venezuela President Nicolas Maduro's government had ceased to provide a consular service or documentation in Colombia. Forest fires have been raging across vast expanses of Siberia. Environmentalists have warned that the scale of blazes could accelerate global warming, aside from any immediate effects on the health of inhabitants. Scores of firefighters have been tackling the blazes. Russian President Vladimir Putin on Wednesday called in the army to fight forest fires that have been raging across vast expanses of Siberia for days, enveloping entire cities in black smoke. Environmentalists have warned that the scale of blazes could accelerate global warming, aside from any immediate effects on the health of inhabitants. Authorities said around 3 million hectares, or 7.4 million acres of land, in the center and east of the country were in the grip of fires on Wednesday. The acrid smoke had affected not only small settlements, but also major cities in western Siberia and the Altai region, as well as the Urals, such as Chelyabinsk and Yakinaraburg and disrupted air travel. Interfax News Agency reported some 2,700 firefighters were already working to tackle the blazes. The Defense Ministry told news agencies that 10 planes and 10 helicopters had been dispatched to the Krasyonarak region, one of the worst affected. Russian Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev promised help and insisted the fires represented no immediate danger for the population during a visit to Krasnyarank on Wednesday. He said on live television, quote, there are objective problems, the issue of distances, hard to reach regions, and factors specific to this year. The head of Russia's consumer safety watchdog, Anna Popovov, meanwhile said the black smoke did not pose major risks to people's health. The Kremlin press service said the armed forces in the Irkutsk region, also badly hit, had been put on high alert without providing further details of military involvement. 
Russia's Federal Forestry Agency, said the fires, triggered by dry thunderstorms and temperatures above 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit, were speared by strong winds. States of emergency have been declared in five Russia regions. People living there have uploaded images to social media, showing roads hazy with smoke and the sun barely visible in the sky. The majority of fires, however, are raging in remote or inaccessible areas. Authorities made the decision to extinguish them only if the estimated damage exceeds the cost of the operation. Maxim Yakovenko, the, Russia, the chief of Russia's Federal Service for Meteorology, warned that the blazes would become worse and worse from year to year, as the signs of visible climate change is everywhere, including in Russia. He said temperatures in Siberia were already 8 to 10 degrees Celsius above average for the season. Yakovenkov said, quote, We are expecting long-lasting heat waves, the drying up of soil, and therefore an increase in temperatures at a faster pace than the global average. In the eastern Ghouta region, just outside Damascus, soldiers sweep a hamlet and surrounding fields for hidden explosives more than a year after rebels were ousted. Thousands of civilians have been wounded by explosives left behind in fields, by roads, or even in buildings, by all sides in Syria's eight-year war. Hundreds more have been killed by the explosives, the Britain-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights says. In July alone, 15 children were among 30 civilians killed by landmines, explosives, or grenades in various parts of the country, it says. State media has said this year, truffle digging saw many people, including women and children, lose their lives in the country's center, northeast and east. Malawi's Paramount Court has ruled in favor of a ban on plastic upholding a 2015 government ban on producing, distributing, and importing thin, single-use plastics typically used in packaging and wrapping. In a judgment handed down, a seven-judge panel of the Supreme Court on Appeals threw out a challenge by plastic manufacturers to stop a ban introduced four years ago. At least a dozen companies had obtained an injunction against implementing the ban, arguing that it infringed on their business rights. But the court this week ruled that plastics measuring less than 60 microns or 60 millionths of a meter were an environmental hazard as they take a long time to decompose despite their thinness. Continued use of the plastics will from now on attract fines, closure of factories and seizure of the prohibited products, said the court. Tawanga Mabale, an environmental director at the Ministry of Natural Resources, welcomed the ruling. Mabale said, quote, Plastics do not biodegrade, so it is a win for the environment. According to the Lilongwe Wildlife Trust, plastic manufacturers in Malawi produce an estimated 75,000 tons of plastic per year, which some 80 percent is single-use plastic. The industry claims that 5,000 jobs could be lost because of the ban. <laughs> It's a landmark ruling for Malawi. I think the Department of Environmental Affairs has to make sure that it enforces uh, this law and that uh, all companies that are producing and selling thin plastics should be stopped uh, from doing so. Coming up. Mexico offers to help the U.S. with gun control legislation. President Trump calls for red flag gun laws and, quote, quick execution for mass killers. Police say there is no indication of racial motive in the Daytona, Ohio shooting. Daytona police chief says the availability of high capacity magazines is problematic after shooting. Plus, for EBC Sports, Major League Soccer joins a Florida community and promotes the All-Star Game in Orlando. Eagle News will be right back.
Kalmbach. You are watching Eagle News, broadcasting from New York City. President Andre Manuel Lopez Obrador said he mourns the deaths of Mexicans and Americans in the El Paso shooting and offers to share information about Mexico's gun legislation with the United States. Asesinatos por los fallecimientos de mexicanos y de también de estadounidenses. También de manera muy respetuosa hasta podríamos nosotros enviar información sobre nuestra legislación y los procedimientos que se siguen en esta materia. President Donald Trump called for red flag gun laws and quick executions for those who commit mass killings during a national address in the wake of deadly shootings in El Paso, Texas and Dayton, Ohio. The president also tells the nation it must stop glorifying violence, pointing the finger at video games over the shootings that left 31 people dead. These barbaric slaughters are an assault upon our communities, an attack upon our nation, and a crime against all of humanity. We are outraged and sickened by this monstrous evil, the cruelty, the hatred, the malice, the bloodshed, and the terror. Trump on Monday told a nation mourning 31 people killed in two mass shootings that he rejected racism and white supremacist ideology, moving to blunt criticism that his divisive rhetoric fuels violence. As flags flew at half-mass at the White House and across the country as the death toll edged up by two, Trump made an unusually direct condemnation of racists. The country tried to digest weekend shootings at a Walmart store in El Paso, Texas, that left 22 dead and another in which nine victims were slain outside a bar in Dayton, Ohio. Trump said, our nation must condemn racism, bigotry, and white supremacy. He stressed that mental illness was the main culprit fueling mass shootings in America, as opposed to the ready availability of firearms or extremist thinking. But in a rare intervention in political manners, former President Barack Obama said divisive rhetoric from the U.S. leaders is part of the problem. Obama said in a statement, we should soundly reject language coming out of the mouths of any of our leaders that feed a climate of fear and hatred or normalizes racist sentiments. Dayton Police Chief Richard Beale said investigators say they have found no evidence so far to indicate that a mass killing in the U.S. city of Dayton was motivated by racial hatred. Just based on where we're at now, we are not seeing any indication of race being a motive. But we are not through all the evidence. And so until we're through all the evidence, we cannot rule that out. But I'm saying we're not seeing at any at this time that suggests race is a motive. Dayton Police Chief Richard S. Beale said it is, quote, fundamentally problematic that civilians have access to high-capacity magazines after a man killed nine people early Sunday in this western Ohio city. If all the magazines that we recovered from the suspect were completely full and we have not had a chance to examine that, we just know we have magazines with bullets in them, but if all of those were completely at full capacity, including the loose rounds found on the ground near him, as well as in a backpack that he carried. He would have had a maximum of 250 rounds uh, in his possession at the time. We can confirm at least 41 spent shell casings from his weapon based on their location and his path of travel. That's at least 41. You know, that's a question I've asked more than once. And I don't think we can know that for certain. It seems to just defy believability he would shoot his own sister. But it's also hard to believe that he didn't recognize that was his sister. Um, so we just don't know. It's problematic. It is fundamentally problematic. They have that level of weaponry in a civilian environment unregulated is problematic. There are 37 total patients treated at area hospitals and they uh, resulted from injuries as a result of gunshot wounds being trampled 
and then lacerations from fleeing the scene and broken glass. As you're aware, they had nine victims plus a shooter were pronounced at the scene. And as of nine o'clock this morning, we have 11 victims still hospitalized. And now for EBC Sports. Major League Soccer joins a Florida community as it promotes the All-Star Game in Orlando. Eagle News correspondent Alita Sanchez reports. Today, Neptune Middle School is hosting a community MLS day for families around the area to have fun in the sun. Love it. Um, it. Basically, it's like for the kids and the community to get together and, um, of course, MLS, you know, Major League Soccer. And um, if you like soccer, you're in the right spot. Yes. The Major League Soccer Association collaborated with Target to create a field day for families and kids of all ages. You know, I think it's important to, um, to showcase the partnership and to, uh, you know, really drum up excitement and activity within the community. Um, so we're really excited to be here as part of Target and um, working with some talent from the um, MLS world to create buzz and awareness for um, the All-Star uh, game to, to come. Uh, it's, it's perfect for right before the kids go back to school. You know, we don't want to pull the kids out of school. Well, they have a great field day while they're in, on summer break. Even in the midst of the afternoon heat, freestylers kick it with the audience, all while teaching them some new tricks. Participants like Ileana, Nasir, McDino, and his little brother Moses share with us their experience with the event and their increased love for soccer. Oh, it's great. As soon as we pulled up to the site, we were super impressed with everything that they had already planned out. Um, this is really cool. There's like a huge boombox with a DJ on top, and the freestylers have been here kicking it, entertaining. I like all the giveaways and like the refreshment centers because it's really hot out here. Mm, learning new tricks and scoring. When I was at my school over here, they were talking about soccer. Then I wanted to join. And when I score, I like to celebrate. Hitting the target. I made a lot of friends. Doing the drills. It helps them to get better at soccer, like doing soccer practice. And it shows them how to have fun and stuff like that. Reporting to you from the Community MLS Day here in Orlando, Florida, I am Elida Sanchez and I am one with 25. Thanks, Alita. That is today's Eagle News. Join us tomorrow for stories that matter to you. Visit our websites at eaglenews.net and eaglenewslive.com. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash eaglenews and on Facebook at facebook.com slash eaglenews. Thank you for watching. I am Jennifer Polentan and I am one with 25. Thank you.